Welcome back friends. So the Dodge D50 pickup truck is done and it's time for another project. And uh, some past viewers may remember that I did start that uh, 1967 Pontiac GTO. Uh, I've completely lost interest in that thing. It requires more than just a little bit of work to get it up to the standard that, that I wanted it to be at. Uh, so it's it's occupying a, uh, some space on the other part of my workbench that I don't really touch. So someday I'll get back to it, but like I said, I just don't have any interest in it right now. So it, it won't meet the deadline for the, uh, the group challenge build. Oh well, sorry. Uh, like I said, someday we'll get back to it, but not right now. So, I've decided on something else. Um, and this is actually the first automobile I ever bought with my own money back in 1989 when I was first in the Air Force, a young airman stationed in Minot, North Dakota. Um, I had driven one of these, a, a different model year, uh, when I worked at a McDonald's in high school, one of my supervisors had one. I think his, I think his was an 87 maybe. The one I bought was actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was an 83, and I was probably the sixth or seventh owner of it by the time I got it, and, and it showed. Uh, and the vehicle I'm talking about is the Camaro Z28 IROC. Um, this model kit is an 85. Like I said, I'm pretty sure mine was an 83, and I bought it uh, in late 1989. And then about six months later, the engine seized up on me, and yeah, I, I think I bought a new engine for it, but then ended up selling it in the car to somebody else for a reasonable amount. Um, I remember the the passenger side mirror was missing from mine, <laughs> so there was there was a hole in the side of the door where it attached. Um, I have actually I have a couple of pictures of that car, not the pictures I thought I had, and it took me a while to find the the two photos that I have. One is of the interior. So I know what color it was, and my memory was off a little bit. And then one of the rear end of the car, um, and again, my memory was off because I could have sworn it had a bit of an orange accent stripe to it. Uh, my car was brown, and according to the photo I have, which again is only the rear of the car, it's got, it is brown, so my memory isn't that bad. But instead of that orange trim stripe, it's it's a gray, or maybe it was silver, a dirty silver. I don't remember exactly. The, the photo is a little hard to tell. It's very similar to this. Uh, I believe this is blue and silver. But I think mine was brown, and, and I think it's gray in the photograph. Anyway, I'll, I'll throw that up here, and, and you can see. So we're going to do that, and I'm going to do it in the color of the one I owned, even though, like I said, mine's an 83, this is an 85. Uh, it's the same generation there may have been some subtle differences I don't think mine had the hood vents in it I think that was specific to the 85 model year uh, and I had the 305 with a four barrel in it and five-speed manual which I loved uh, and North Dakota is probably a terrible place to have a car like that because nine months out of the year the roads are icy and slippery and you lose traction pretty easy in fact I lost traction easy in that car in a summer dry day so yeah not a good car for a young 19 year old to have I think at the time I bought it I think it was 18 in fact um, anyway that's the next project I also placed an order with MCW finishes for paint for this um, I couldn't couldn't find an exact color call out for it so I ordered three 
shades of brown metallics from MCW and when I get them here I'll I'll compare them to the photographs I have what little bit you can see on there and uh, make a determination from that and then for the interior I think for the interior I'll probably just use uh, my Tamiya acrylics uh, I like using those they're easy to use for me um, I've, I've learned how to spray them pretty well I have a few other paints um, some old old testers model master actually uh, and I have some mission models paints but I think the uh, I think the Tamiya paints work well for what I do, so that's what we're going to be using uh, for the exterior is the Model Car World MCW finishes uh, lacquer paints for that. Anyway, I hope you all stick around for this one. Uh, I don't know how many uh, videos it'll entail to get to completion on this one. I've I've looked over the man, the instructions that come with it and the parts. It seems like a fairly basic build. It's it's probably just one step above being a curbside because it does have an engine for it, but it's it's not highly involved. In fact, I think the parts count's fairly low too, if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, I don't even I don't even know. Okay, so it's a skill level four according to this, so that's less up to 120 pieces. Yeah, so not a lot. But it should turn out to be a pretty good kit. All right, I'm just getting started cleaning up some pieces, the initial parts of the engine. And uh, I thought this was a little unique. I, I don't think I've ever come across this, although to be honest, I haven't built a lot of automobile models. Uh, in my past, I did more airplane stuff. But this engine, all right, so the bottom half of the engine and the transmission is already molded into the, um, the frame, the belly pan and the frame of the automobile. So that's your, your bottom, there's your oil pan, there's the bottom half of your transmission. Uh, that's probably the oil filter there, I'm guessing. Then the engine mounts. All right, and then the upper half is molded in a left and right side and then glued together. And then that goes down on top of what's already molded in there. I thought that was kind of unique. And then the um, valve covers and the intake manifold and all that is all molded as one piece and then that goes onto the top of the block. It's unique to me, I, I've never seen that before. But uh, it, I already you know, test fitted everything prior to starting to glue and uh, it all goes together pretty well. I kinda like it. All right, so I've run into a bit of a dilemma not really a dilemma. It's just gonna, it's gonna require some judicious masking, because you know normally you've got the engine and the transmission as one unit separate from the frame, and in this case we don't necessarily have that. We've got a good portion of it that we can do separate from the frame, but the transmission gets painted one color and then the block is painted another color and then you've got the uh, valve covers and hoses and the pulleys and belts and alternator all that good stuff that all needs separate colors but the engine and transmission see in order to get it the proper colors I'm gonna to have to mask it while it's in the frame, I think. Um, yeah, I'm gonna to have to mask around the engine mounts, mask the transmission, well, or mask the support for the transmission and mask the engine mounts away from the engine. Yeah, anyway. It's gonna take uh, 
going to take a lot of masking, some little bits and pieces to really make it look right. And the belt and pulley needs to be added first before the engine even goes in because you can't get it on afterwards because of the the front portion of, I don't know what, all right, I'm not a car guy really, so I don't know what that is technically. Of course, the radiator goes in there. That's got to get painted. The belt and pulleys go on. Let's get this in the right orientation. All right, so that's all got to get painted in situ because you can't get it in there afterward. All right, you can't assemble it after the fact. After sleeping on it and giving it a little bit more thought, I decided I would go ahead and prime everything ahead of time. Um, this is the this is the upper portion of the engine. There's the lower portion, so this goes in like that. And when it's mated together, all right, this side you can see the parting line fairly well. On this side, it's pretty well hidden. You don't really see it. And in fact, all around the oil pan, you don't notice it at all because it's, it's in a perfect separation location, you know, the oil pan being that separation point. Um, but still, I'm going to have to paint the forward half separate from the transmission. And then, likewise, with the top half separate from the transmission. And I haven't fully decided on colors as of yet. Um, the instructions call for an iron metallic for the block. And that's a Revel call-out. So I use Tamiya paints primarily. And I don't have anything that cross-references directly to that iron metallic that they call. What I do have, and I, I don't know that this is quite what they're calling for. Uh, XF86 gray metallic or metallic gray. Um... You know, that could work. I also have some older Model Master acrylics, and this is steel. You know, that might be a better color for it. But then, you know, it is a Chevy engine, so maybe we need to do the block in Chevy orange. And I, I asked some members of a Facebook group, Lucas C's Facebook page, if anybody had a decent mixing ratio for Tamiya acrylics to come up with that Chevy orange. And people responded and gave me, which I, I mean, I probably could have come up with this on my own and been pretty close. But uh, three times, I'm sorry. Yeah. They're saying three times the X7 to one time X6. Now, I would have thought that maybe that was the other way around, so three orange to one red, but they're saying three red to one orange. So I'll have to, I'll have to mix that a couple times and see if that really works out to be the best combination. Either way, I think, I think I'm gonna go this route anyway I think it'll be a good contrasting color to all this brown. And the, the brown, by the way, is uh, Mr. Hobby's Mahogany Surfacer 1000 in the spray can, rattle can. I like this stuff. It, uh, it's very similar to the Tamiya Fine Gray in the rattle can primer. So I've used that a couple of times now, and I really like it. So after I come to a decision and get it painted and then assembled into the um, into the chassis, we'll come back and proceed from there. 
thanks for tuning in and watching, and uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this as we go along. Feel free to drop a comment, give it a thumbs up, or two thumbs up in this case. Uh, share it with your friends, and we'll talk to you all later.